the Illinois Fighting Illini. Now, Brett Bielema, year one, I don't know that you can call it anything but a success in year one. They were they went five and seven. And no, they didn't make a bowl game. They probably should have, though. Um, Illinois surprised me a lot last year. Uh, their projected SP Plus record this year is four and eight. And, of course, when you look at the numbers, I mean, it does make sense. They were number 94 in PPA margin, number 81 in net points per drive. Uh, but this is a team that, you know, didn't beat themselves. Number 32 in turnover margin, number 26 in penalties per game. Their biggest issue this year, you got a lot of momentum last year, and now you have only 57% returning production. That's number 94 in the country. So that is not good. Uh, as far as defense goes, number 95 in returning production. Offense is only number 83 but you did begin to establish a culture. And that's certainly a good thing as far as Illinois is concerned. Let's start off with the offense here. Number 102 in PPA per drive is really bad. I mean, just a really, really bad. Uh, rushing success rate, number 62, the passing success rate. Uh, there's a reason why they brought in Tommy DeVito uh, for one year, right? He's the quarterback from Syracuse. Uh, I would imagine he starts over Sitkowski. But they also swapped out their offensive coordinator. Passing success rate was number 124. Not going to get it done. Especially if you cannot run as well as these other teams in the division. I'll say that. The new OC, Barry Lunny Jr. He was the OC at UTSA. He was Bielema's tight ends coach at Arkansas. Helped establish guys like Hunter Henry, etc. Uh, transfer quarterback, Tommy DeVito. You got to hope that he hits. You got to hope he hits. The running back, Chase Brown, is back. He had over 1,000 yards rushing last year, 5.9 yards per carry. Tight end Ford is back looking for a strong senior season, which should really work with uh, Barry Lundy Jr. as the uh, uh, as the offense coordinator because he understands, of course, how to work with tight ends. Uh, along with that, uh, the wide receiver, Isaiah Williams, is back. So that's that's good, definitely a good thing. You got some you got some playmakers there. You got some studs. You got leaders in the locker room. I think that's the biggest thing here. Offensive line's got a couple of studs on the right side. Uh, the rest is going to be rebuilt, but if there's one thing that I trust Brett Bielema with, it would be an offensive line. Uh, they were number 21 in line yards last year, number 15 in stuff rate allowed. So, really, the run game should have been better than number 72 PPA per play last year uh, as far as rushing PPA. I'm curious what it'll look like this year with that rebuilt offensive line. Uh, you're starting off mm, relatively easy. Eh, I mean, not, not easy, obviously. Uh, you got Wyoming at Indiana, Virginia, and Chattanooga in the first four games. It could be tricky, but, you know, you those are all beatable teams this season. Uh, let's talk about the defense. Defensive coordinator Ryan Walters did good things in year one. That team was really good at tackling. Uh, number 28 in points per scoring opportunity. They actually got stopped, so that was promising. Number 59 in PPA per play. Uh, that was an improvement over the previous coaching staff for sure. They allowed only 18 points per game over the final nine games of the season. Uh, the tackling, again, was fantastic. Uh, but big issue here is the linebacking core replacing five out of six. There's not a lot of depth behind their, their studs at defensive line and at defensive back. Only two D-line transfers, so they're relying on recruits and guys that have already been in the system. Uh, how good can Walters develop the inexperienced, unheralded guys? Right, I, I like his schemes. But how quickly can he develop those guys that don't have a ton of experience? That's going to be an issue. They're projected favorites in seven games this year, uh, at least according to the guys over at CFB Winning Edge. Their win total is four and a half. Now, it's juiced to the over at minus 130, and a big part of that is the fact that, again, only 57% returning production. Uh, if you look at the keys to the season here, First off, they probably should have made a bowl game last year. Their postgame win expectancy was 6.12, and they only went 5-7 and seven in the regular season. So they were right there in a ton of ball games. Uh, they were number 32 in turnover margin, 26 in penalties per game. That means they didn't beat themselves. you got to keep that going. already brought that up before. Team was definitely starting to gel at the end of the season. But again, it was really weird because you went 3-2 and two down the stretch. You, you beat Northwestern. Should have done that. Uh... You won at Minnesota. That was surprising. You won at Penn State in nine overtimes. Again, surprising. But you lost at home to, to Rutgers. Uh, you know, losing to Iowa on the road is nothing to sniff at. I understand that. But uh, regardless, like, how how do you go beat Penn State 
and go on the road and beat Minnesota and lose at home to Rutgers, right? It, it's just inconsistency. Just the biggest thing. The biggest question here, how much does 57% returning production hurt after a step in the right direction in year one? I, I mean, I will begin to see that, I would imagine. The big issue here is, did you have enough time in year one to establish the culture so that everybody understands what their role is? I, I think so. I, I've let it be known on this show multiple times. I like Brett Bielema. I expect him to do good things here. I think he's going to be a good, good coach for Illinois. I think this is a step forward this year. I think they go six and six. Like, I, I think they win their first four games, and then it's tough sledding the rest of the way because that is a tough, brutal schedule, uh, especially after you get that Chattanooga game in week four. Uh, you got at Wisconsin, Iowa, and Minnesota. Then you get another bye week. You play at Nebraska, Michigan State, Purdue, at Michigan, at Northwestern. Just a brutal schedule. But I think that they can get those first four games. I think they win those first four. And then you find two more somewhere else. Like, I've got wins over Purdue and Northwestern, but it wouldn't surprise me if they end up beating Michigan State or Minnesota again or if they beat Iowa this year, et cetera. I, I think Illinois can make a bowl game. The over-under is four and a half. It's juiced to the over at minus 130. I, I like them to go six and six. It, especially if you're a favorite in seven games. Yeah, that's the way I'm rolling with it. Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.